it is also part of a structure where one of the cores is we cannot create an effective, honest Afghan central government. The issue is not elections. The election was effectively rigged long before the ballot boxes were stuffed. Karzai had made deals with warlords for block votes. Many of the Afghan people turned out to know what they were voting against, but they had no way to know what they were voting for. There aren't political parties. There's no real structured opposition. Unfortunately, the way we created a government and our failure to pay for the Afghan civil service for nearly two years disbanded what was left out of the Taliban and created a grossly over-centralized power structure in the country. To make this work, you're going to have to empower provincial governments and provincial councils and district governments and district councils. And in many areas in Afghanistan, there is a virtual power vacuum. You're going to have to work at the local level. And the keys are, first, you shape offensives rather than pursue the Taliban in the field. You create a structure where you can go into population centers and clear out the insurgents. And that means stay behind in covert networks. And you have a sufficient mix of Afghans and NATO ISAF troops to do so with an absolute minimum of civilian casualties. You are staying. You're not going in and refighting again and again in the same area, creating collateral damage and civilian casualties and anger and hostility. You will use what is now beginning to be a significant Afghan army. So it has an Afghan face and Afghans who make decisions as to how the tactical encounters take place. It will take longer to support it with an Afghan police. We have eight years of mistakes to compensate for. That will be a structure into which you do bring what Afghans have shown consistently they want, which is not some kind of radical democratic reform or instant development or values borrowed from the West, but day-to-day -day security, some kind of prompt justice system, which is critical in many parts of Afghanistan to the functioning of society, economic stability, basic economic opportunity, which often means an unimproved road or a water project or limited electric power. It means that you bring in governance, initially sometimes at the local level, sometimes at provinces and districts, but there are Afghan ministries and there are Afghan instruments of aid and governance that we can work on and strengthen and build up over time. This will not be quick and it won't be instant. It will probably take us 12 to 18 months to show that we can do this and that we can do it on a scale and at a pace that will be decisive. It will mean that in the process we have to be extraordinarily careful about Afghan sensitivities and reshape the nature of Afghan partnership from using Afghan forces to follow NATO ISAF forces to giving them a real role in planning operations, in intelligence, in decision making. And that too will take time. We talk again about doubling these forces. That will take probably between now, the earliest date would be 2014, a more practical date might be 2016. But these are long, difficult wars. They are not won through slogans or concepts. They're won through management and execution. And two other phases of this are going to be difficult. One is that you are going to have to really work within NATO ISAF not to ask for large numbers of additional troops, although all of us would recognize they're welcome, but to make this alliance effective and efficient to the degree that it can be, which will be anything but perfect. It is also to deal with a massively corrupt and inefficient aid process, not at the PRT level, but at the United Nations, the NGO, and the broader level focused on mid and long-term development activities. Where unfortunately often Western contractors have been as corrupt and ineffective as Afghans have. 
And these realities are going to take a lot of effort at a quiet level. People talk about anti-corruption drives, but we are not going to succeed in Afghanistan by somehow removing power brokers and the corrupt and replacing them with the next set of power brokers and corrupt. The tools are fiscal control, careful project management, empowering people at the local level who one way or another will work, and we have enough experience to show this, in ways which meet the needs of the people. That's going to be extremely difficult because one way or another, the fact that Karzai chose to take an election he had already attempted to fix and turn it into one which is modeled more on Iran than democracy has not helped. But let me also say that this war will be won or lost on a reality which all of us in the West need to firmly understand. If Afghans get security, economic opportunity, justice, and minimal government services, the vast majority could care less how the government that provides them is chosen. And if they don't get those things, they also are not going to care how the government is chosen because we know from steady surveys that the source of anger and resentment among Afghans is with the quality of governance. We may teach them political science and Western values over the next five to ten years. Somehow I doubt that they will be a mirror image if we do. But the immediate reality is to deal with their needs in their terms and defeat the Taliban where there has been a power vacuum in the past.